Hi, my name is Sunny, and this is video two of my pan hypopituitarism uh, video series project thing, where I'm explaining um, my life with pan hypopituitarism. In my first video, I kind of gave a very simple explanation of um, what you may experience yourself with this disorder. And in this video, I'm going to explain the actual process of um, my diagnosis and um, how everything got started for me when we first figured out what was going on. When I was born, I was jaundiced really bad. Um, I actually don't, I don't know a whole lot about what was going on, you know, because I was a baby and I only have the stories that my parents and uh, grandmother have told me. So, um, I know that I was jaundiced, and I know that the doctors knew that there was something wrong with my pituitary gland and my left eye. Um, over the years, we found out that my panhypopituitarism was brought on by something called septo-optic dysplasia. Um, when I was developing in my mother's womb, my, um, something about my, uh, left eye, um, some aspects of, you know, the set up there with it. Sorry, my terminology isn't all that, uh, professional, but, um, something about, something in there pressing up against my pituitary gland, and it wouldn't let it develop properly. Um, septoptic dysplasia is very rare, and, um, it can cause most people that are afflicted with it to have, um, mental disorders, learning disabilities, Luckily, I didn't, you know, develop any of those. I had a very mild case of the septo-optic dysplasia, and the, really the biggest problem that I have with it is my eyesight is terrible, and if I take off my glasses, you can see that my, um, left eye will twitch really badly, and, um, I have to have glasses with, like, really high prisms in them that keep my eye focused so it doesn't, you know, go all around all over the place. When I was a baby, it, like, would go, you know, exploring on its own, I guess you could say. Um, which is one of the first, uh, signals that there was something very wrong, uh, going on in there. Uh, let's see here. I think the next thing that I remember being told about, um, I do remember, uh, when I was, you know, a little kid in elementary school. Uh, this was back when I first got my diagnosis of pan hypopituitarism. I was getting bullied a lot. Um... I, it was obvious that I wasn't developing like other kids were. Um, people would make fun of me relentlessly. It, it, it was pretty awful. And eventually, you know, I begged my parents to, you know, I know there's something going on here, let's figure this out. And, uh, like I said before, I was, I was so young, I really don't remember much about it, but I do remember they took me to, uh, Riley Hospital in Indianapolis, and, um, we got some tests done. I had a a CAT scan and some blood work, and I remember being on an IV for, it felt like an entire day that we were there, and I was, you know, put under, um, anesthesia for a while. I was in and out of it. Um, kind of a funny thing, I remember the first time they brought in my very first IV, I freaked out. I saw that needle and was not having any of it. They actually had to hold me down to put it in, but that's another story. Um, so, they got all that taken care of, and I was introduced to an endocrinologist named Dr. Eric Eimel. He's an excellent doctor. If you're in Indiana, and you or your child, um, has, um, you know, needs to be tested for pan or you've been diagnosed with it, and you need a new endocrinologist, go check out Dr. Eric Eimel, or Immel, I, I'm sorry, I don't really know how to pronounce it correctly, but he really cares about his patients, and he helped me a lot. I was very sad when I had to change endocrinologists um, to something closer to where I live now, so that I, you know, could see an endocrinologist more often. Um, anyway, he helped explain um, to me and my parents um, what exactly this diagnosis meant. Um, that I wasn't, my pituitary gland wasn't making uh, the hormones that my body needs to, you know, be healthy and alive. And I have a, an adrenal deficiency, I'm hypocortisol, um, cortisol dependent. Um, a, a lot of, pretty much all the worst parts of pan Um And they put me on some medication that was supposed to help kickstart um, my, uh, start, start up my, 
help you with my adrenal deficiency. I can't remember exactly what all of it was. I'm sure if I looked into it, I could find out. But, um, they gave me a bunch of shots and, uh, put me on human growth hormone replacement and had me take pills for, um, for my regular, um, hormone replacement therapy. And I started feeling better. I was feeling less lethargic. Um, I started out, back before I started the panhypopituitarism, um, the hormone replacement therapy, I was very small. I was, a, I was skinny. I miss those days. Anyway, but, um, I was a stick. I was, like, unhealthily skinny. I was very, um, frail. I got sick a lot. And when, when they finally put me on the, uh, the medication and the human growth hormone, um, before I, you know, was on it, they said that if I didn't take it, I would have been a dwarf. And it was really stressful for all of us to, you know, my parents and I to get started on that, but we did, and I'm glad that we did, because it really helped. And, um, finally, uh, in my, you know, I started developing, and in my sophomore year of high school, around there, um, my doctor, my endocrinologist at the time, Dr. Eric Eimel, put me on, um, birth control to help kickstart puberty. Put me on progesterone and stuff like that. And I finally did have my first period, and things started growing, and, you know, it, 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 I haven't been taken off of birth control since then. I think that I'm probably going to have to continue to take that to have a period. Um, my endocrinologist has told me that they don't know if I will have a period, you know, if I don't take birth control, so I have to do that. Um, as for, um, fertility, I've never done a fertility test, but chances are I'm infertile, and even if I wasn't with my condition, I probably couldn't, you know, my body couldn't handle having children anyway. I'd probably get very sick, and either the baby or I or both of us wouldn't, you know, something bad would happen. So I'm not even going to try. Um, but again, that's, that's really another story. Um, let's see here. So, I was on human growth hormone for a while when I was a kid, and, and I, you know, freaked out about the needle, and I, it, it got too much. I was in a lot of pain because I really didn't know how to give myself a real shot, and, you know, my parents weren't doctors either, so, um, I ended up stopping that, uh, regimen, and, you know, in my earlier video, I explained that at the beginning of the new year, around that time, I'm going to be getting back on human growth hormone which is going to help a lot with my current health, um, because my immune system has really suffered. And I've been getting sick a lot lately, so. But y you can go back to my other video and watch that to explain a little bit more about why I'm going to get on that regimen. Um, but I think that I'm done with this video now. I think that I've explained everything from, um, you know, birth to diagnosis to today, really. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm sorry if I missed anything, but, yeah, um, if I did and I catch myself, I'll make another video and, um, finish up, you know, explaining everything. So, I hope that this was informative, and I guess I'll see you in another video. Later.